It's yet another week of nothing but Star Wars as we discuss more shenanigans from Galaxy's Edge and also get more details about Celebration Anaheim next year. The convention tickets are now on sale as we also know that it'll be hot, hot, hot as they've decided to move it to August. Better crank up that AC. The reservation period may be coming to an end for Galaxy's Edge, but it's just starting for Oko's Cantina and Savi's Workshop as they prepare for the opening day crowds. Also, Endgame's ending, Forky's photo, Amphibia's adventures, and more on this sold-out episode of the Mousepire Podcast. I'm Anthony. I'm Diggs. I'm Tim. Welcome to Mousepire, your source for Disney, Star Wars, and everything in between. This is the podcast where both empires collide. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Mousepire Podcast. Oh, hey, what's going on? Uh oh. The apprentice lives. Best start for leaving in ghost stories, Miss Turner. You're in one. Bring out me, Hardy Joe. You never had a friend like me. Some imagination, huh? <laughs> Made you look. Hey! So, uh. We're started. Star Wars and stuff. Disneyland. There's a lot of Star Wars going on. Yeah. A lot of things happening. And I, just real quick, uh, Anthony has some information that you guys need to know about. We're going to just kick off talking about everything we have going on. Yeah, Star Wars is coming. Yeah, uh, later than we thought, though. So uh, just to kick it off, uh, last week we got the announcement that Star Wars Celebration has dates. And has the tickets on sale date, and if you didn't already see that, well, they're already on sale because this will be coming out on Friday. Happy birthday, Star Wars Celebration! I just wanted to say happy birthday. I felt like I missed it. No, I think that was last year's, actually, was uh, the birthday of Star Wars Celebration or something. I just wanted to say happy birthday. I don't know. Happy birthday. So, uh, yeah, so Star Wars Celebration Anaheim next year, 2020, will be taking place, not in April, but in the balmy, balmy, gross, worst weather possible of the end of August. Well, this is not Chicago. That's true. <laughs> or the East Coast. Well, I mean, Chicago, what's Chicago in August? I mean, probably just a little bit windy. I mean, I don't know how hot it gets in Chicago. Uh, tell me, Chicago winds. But uh, we know that August is traditionally our hottest month. Uh, I remember a few years ago when uh, D23 was, back when D23 was first taking place in August, uh, it was really, really hot, and I remember being annoyed by that. So, uh, yeah, Star Wars Celebration Anaheim will be coming August 27th through 30th next year. As I said, tickets go on sale today, oh, what? June 21st. Now, now I can't go to Burning Man. Oh, well, that's too bad. Is it Really? Is that the same weekend? Well, it's... You know, if it's a uh, Labor Day. Then oh well, well, dude, that's a back-to-back weekend. Hardcore, man. Yeah. Hardcore. Well, that's what Burning Man's hardcore. You I know, mean, that's they what burn men. That's what drugs are for. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, tickets went on sale this morning at nine a.m. If you don't have them already, well, you definitely don't have Jedi Master Package seats. Nope. Uh, but that means you also probably didn't have the nine hundred dollars to pay for said seats. No. Nope. And even if you did. Uh, those usually sell out so fast that... Uh, Makes your head spin. Basically. Because <laughs> in uh, 2013, when tickets for Anaheim 2015 went on sale, I actually had some extra spending cash at the time. And I was going to get Jedi Knight. They, back when they had Jedi Knight package, that was only like uh, four or $500 or something like that. I was going to get it. But I tried to get it, and they still sold out before I can get them. Dang. So that's how quick that shit sells out. It's basically like a Sorcerer's Package of Star Wars, but way cheaper. So uh, anyways, you're not going to get those because they're gone already. So <laughs> if you did, congrats. Let us know. Bye. 
Uh, so advance tickets will cost you. Ugh. Yeah, so they went up about $50. They are $195 for a four day, which is interesting because it was $149 or something like that for five days at Orlando last year. So uh, you may feel like we're getting a little che- cheated. Uh, you may feel like that if we don't get some like really cool uh, guests or something, especially since there's no movie coming up, that uh, they're just raising prices for the heck of it. And, well, you'd probably be right. But uh, be that as it may, so $195 for adults and $70 for kids, and that is for the four-day package. One-day tickets are $75 for adults and $35 for kids. There is no specific price per for the day as opposed to like something like D23 or other cons, which are cheaper like on Sundays or on the first day or something like that. Well, nope, you're going to pay out the door no matter what the uh, day it is. So uh, uh, speaking of at the door, if you don't get them now, tickets at the door will be $10 more than what everything I said. To piggyback off of what happened at last year's celebration uh, with issues uh, that people had with the lottery system, they are ad- telling way in advance now that a lottery system will be used f- to determine access to panels, the most obviously the big panels and stuff like that. So uh, you know well in advance uh, how to make your plans for celebration. Let's hope that they don't take as long to the end to release the schedule as opposed to they like they did last time. But uh, they seem to be well uh, ahead on uh, information, hopefully, this time. So uh, there will be a lot more to talk about, but get your tickets. Don't snooze. You lose. Or you'll lose. Don't snooze or you'll lose. You snooze, you lose. Uh. <laughs> All right, so a, uh, uh, Tim and I are straight out of... Uh, but two, no, but two. We went again. Tight. <laughs> we went there yesterday again, again, and um, it was pretty cool. Well, we, my my friend had actually gotten an email from them because I think she didn't have a full six people on her registration, and they said, "Hey, you can make changes. You can add people up to you plus five additional guests. So call us." Uh, she had forgotten to call. I happen to know from previous experience that there's a location in the park where they allow where they will make the change if they're if they choose to do that for you. But I haven't heard anybody say that they haven't. Um, I think they just went about telling everybody no changes, no extension, you know, no changes of any kind. But when it came down to it, they were willing to do it for people. Uh, I think they just didn't want a lot of people asking, which is why they said to, that they wouldn't do it. Plus uh, that. Uh the Starcade doesn't get them. It's not that busy with people trying to change stuff. So. Right. No, there's, I mean, we were, I think I've seen one or two other groups in there the couple yeah. times I've been in. And the only time, the reason I've gone in is because I've been telling people, oh, you need to make changes. Let's yeah. go in here. Go to Starcade. We actually went last Saturday with a group and they created an entire new registration for uh, two extra people that we had. Um, granted, it was one of their birthdays and, uh, the main person on the registration was a cast member, uh, so maybe that's why they did it. But we they let us go in with eight people instead of um, only six. And they did that by, again, creating an entirely new registration. Uh, so I don't think they're going to do that for everybody, but uh, it worked out then. But nonetheless, I went with our friend. Diggs was in the park with Miles, and I was like, oh, they think they might have two extra spots. So we just you know went for it, right? Why not ask? Yep. And they got to go in. I hung out with my friends for a bit because I hadn't seen them in a while. And then I joined back up with Diggs after a while. But uh, uh, Tim had a rest. I had to rest. He says we need to sit down. Yeah. Well, no, I said I need to do some sitting because I, you know, it's like they're walking <laughs> that's, around that's with their baby. to and, rest. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, remember the last time we were there, we were we did some sitting, and it yes. was like, oh man, this is great. You just sit here and watch all the idiots, and you know. Drink some water, uh, you know, make fun of the passersby. No, and it's a night, you know, the, the, it's what we've been doing for years. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, scenery is, you know, new in there. So, so we got, uh, some, uh, news today of what you need to know, uh, as soon as, uh, the Batu is open to all guests on June 24th. <laughs> 
And uh, yeah, there's a lot of things that we're going to be telling you uh, telling you about that you're going to need to know about all that, inclu- uh, including a virtual queue, parking, lineup, security opening, what time they open, and all that kind of stuff. I guess they are expecting a lot of people to uh, invade the park on the 24th. I will not be there early that early to uh, check it out. I will. I am planning to be there on the 24th just to see how things go with the virtual queue, see if I can actually use the virtual queue to get in to uh, the land. And, um, yeah, so. We have some more information about that pretty much now, right? Yeah, that's what I was leading to. okay, yeah. It sounds to me, just based on the scanning over the information, that it's going to be a little easier than we thought. It just takes a bit of work and waking up early or going to bed late, whichever it is that you're. All right. I don't know. I think it's exactly what we thought it was. My, In my opinion, it seemed like you would have to be there and have scanned your ticket or pass to enter prior to being able to make a reservation to um, go into Savi's workshop or to even access the virtual queue at all. Well, let's just start with parking. So I have uh, some information here about parking. If you guys are planning to be there early uh, to get into Galaxy's Edge, Toy Story parking lot will open at midnight. So right at midnight on June 24th, uh, parking will open for uh, Toy Story. Mickey and Friends parking structure will open at 4 a.m. The security checkpoints will operate overnight. And it says uh, guests wishing to queue for entry prior to Disneyland opening, which is 8 a.m., should follow cast member directions in the Esplanade. Now, after that day, uh, starting on June 25th, the parking is going to be just regular. Mickey and Friends will open at 6 a.m. The security checkpoints will uh, start to operate at 5 a.m. And there will be no overnight queue if you're, uh, you know, going on the 25th and after. Uh, you're just going to, you know, basically, you know, when the park uh, parking opens, that's when you can get there. So they're pretty much keeping people from lining up by not allowing them to park. Yeah. On the 24th, you can line up and park. Do you think they're going to open the downtown Disney parking early? And then, like, if people choose to go in there, they'll have to just pay those exorbitant ticket, you know, parking prices? Well, that's a a good uh, question. And it says here the downtown Disney district, well, just basically, it doesn't say anything about the parking here. It just says that that certain uh, locations will open at 7 a.m. Hmm. So Starbucks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's pretty probably, much. That probably open at midnight when the, the people get there. So I don't, I don't know. It doesn't say anything about downtown Disney parking. I think that's the, like, if you really want to go and try to be one of the first people and you're willing to pay the downtown Disney prices or go back to your car after a certain hour, you know, that's the, the only way to do it. But, um, I suggest everyone stay, just stay away until 5 a.m. Right. Or just stay away in general. I don't know. Well, they'll they they let you pull in. You just have to sit at those turnstiles until they start charging. Oh, the the toll booth. Yeah, right. Turnstile toll booth. Yeah. Yeah, you're not. They're not counting. You know, you're not going in the car, and the thing right. turns and kills your car. Right. <laughs> well, that'd be interesting if you drove through it. Maybe they were foam covered or something, and it kind of rotated, kind of pushed you on the way in, the butt on the way out. You know. No, Tim. Haven't you ever done that where you go through the turnstile and it ooh, gets you from behind when you go through? Whoa. Hello again. It's Justin with more great tips to help you enjoy your visit at the Disneyland Resort. Now, there's truly never been a better time to visit us here at the Disneyland Resort. Of course, we just opened Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, which is totally awesome. But we also have tons of new stuff for all guests to enjoy. Like Tale of the Lion King, the return of Disneyland Forever Fireworks, the new Mickey's Filler Magic, and new attractions at Pixar Pier, just to name a few. Today, I'm excited to be here in our new 14-acre land as we share with you some more tips in this next No Before You Go video. Now, remember, as we've said before, if you plan to visit until June 23rd, you must have a reservation and valid theme park admission to visit Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Visiting with a reservation is a truly fantastic experience, and we still have hotel rooms available if you want a guaranteed reservation. Now, if you plan to visit June 24th or later, no reservations are required. Now, we want you to have a great time when you visit. So starting June 24th, we'll have a virtual queue available. They'll allow you to explore the rest of the Disneyland Resort while you're waiting to see Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. And that 
is pretty cool, right? Let's go check it out. The first step you'll want to take is to make sure you have the Disneyland app on your phone. We recommend downloading this on your smartphone prior to your visit. From the Disneyland app home screen, go to the Star Wars Galaxy's Edge status and access page. This is the area for everything you need to know about Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Land status, attraction wait times, linking to the Play Disney Parks app. Super fun! Starting June 24th, the first thing you'll want to look at is the current land status. If it displays open, you can go right into Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. If it displays access by boarding group only, you'll need to join a boarding group to enter the land. And you'll see an option to join a boarding group right below it. Once you have clicked the option to join the boarding group, you'll be asked to create your party. You'll need to be signed in to the app to create your party. Once you have created your party, you will be given a boarding group number and confirmation. You can check your boarding group status at any time. When your boarding group is called, you will receive a notification to your phone and you are ready for your visit. Please note, you will have two hours to return to the land. So if you are enjoying another attraction or a meal, no need to rush. You will have plenty of time to get back into the land. At the land entrance, your entry code will be scanned and your adventure begins. Now, if you don't use the Disneyland app, you can request to be part of a boarding group at select Fast Pass distribution locations. Just ask a cast member for assistance to direct you. And don't forget, your boarding pass is attached to your theme park admission ticket, and you must be inside the park to request to be part of a boarding group. Well, it really is a fantastic time to visit us here at the Disneyland Resort, and we look forward to seeing you this summer. Till the Spire! Yeah. <laughs> Till the spire. Till the spire falls off. Mm-hmm. Oh. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, so um Tim was talking about before you get to, I don't know if you can can you do the virtual queue before you get to the park? No. I didn't think so. Well, so that... you have to do it when you get to the park. So you still have to wait until you get to the park oh. to join the virtual queue. You have well, to that... have your ticket or pass scanned before you can. See, that but... was my original impression, but then when I was reading the stuff it just said Starting at 7 a.m., you can do those things. Well, so, because once you're in the park, nobody's in the park before 7 a.m. anyways. I was thinking, oh, I could wake up at 7. No, so this isn't the 7 a.m. You're talking about something that we're not at yet. Ah. Uh, you're talking about Savi and the Cantina. That's, we're not there yet. That's, so that's a separate situation. That's a separate situation. Uh, this is just the virtual queue to get into Galaxy's Edge itself. Basically, as the guy said, you... Go in, and you'll be able to get the virtual queue boarding, boarding pass for uh, your party up to, what was it it said? Six, nine, 22? Hike. Uh, on the uh, actual uh, app. But if you don't have, uh, if you live in the Stone Age and you don't have a phone that you can get the app, then you can get paper boarding passes uh, for Galaxy's Edge at... Uh, from the Fast Pass machines at Space Mountain, Haunted Mansion, Indiana Jones, Splash Mountain, and Matterhorn. Do we don't know what times those are going to be available? Because I mean, what's going to happen when? Are they just going to be using up like one machine from each of those places, whereas uh, the other machines will still be for those particular rides? I assume. Yeah, it's probably going to be uh, depending on how many people are there, how many machines they use. Kind of like when you're getting World of Color Fast Passes back. Over at the Grizzly Rapids, right, and they have one for that or two for that, and then the other ones from the Rapids. So, or like Matterhorn when they were having one side was Matterhorn, and then uh, the three of them were Matterhorn, and then the ones across were for uh, Small World. Yeah, they still have that. Oh, okay. So yeah, so it'll be similar to that. Uh, they'll probably like take over the Small World. Uh, so, anyways, yeah. So Space Haunted Mansion, Indiana Jones, Splash Mountain, and Matterhorn. Uh, remember that. That's for those of you who are not having real phones. Zach Morris phone. Yes, Zach Morris phone. <laughs> uh, you'll be able to try to turn on push notifications to have it actually like notify you when your reservation is coming up. Uh, obviously, if you know when it is, though, you'll be paying attention to that. It's not like uh, something where they're going to notify you before. You'll go in at whatever time. It says, uh, we were telling you guys about the sign that is right now in the uh, hub by Plaza. Uh, it says that you should be able to get updates on which Galaxy's Edge boarding groups are now boarding. 
And then other signs throughout the park will instruct visitors which Galaxy's Edge entrance to use. Uh, Fantasyland, Frontier, or Critter Country. You need to scan the barcode on your ticket or phone to enter Galaxy's Edge. I'm sure it'll be just like Fast Pass, where uh, it'll be one of those things where people are going to be like uh, really, really dumb about it at first. Uh, but then, you know, once you get the hang of it, and once uh, more people are doing it, it'll just go by uh, pretty smoothly and uh, work pretty smoothly, I would think. Right? Yeah. So, hopefully, uh, you guys will figure it out. It's not that difficult. <laughs> Even a caveman can do it. Wow, racist. I know. Favorite right? commercial <laughs> ever. Uh, so, getting back to what Tim was talking about. Tim was talking about, uh, so for reservations, uh, during now, starting on the 24th, once the virtual queue system kicks in, uh, you will have to make reservations through the uh, Disney app. Basically, like as if you're making reservations for a restaurant, right? Isn't that what you get from it? Basically, yeah, it's, it's exactly just like that. Yeah, so basically, uh, like just like because in fact, you even have to have a credit card uh, linked, and there is deposits on both of these things. Uh, so to make reservations for Oga's Cantina and Savvy's Workshop, you will be able to go onto the Disney app or the uh, from home. Uh, I believe if you're doing it from home, don't you have to go through the... Or can you make reservations through the app from home, or do you have to go through the actual website from home? Uh, you should be able to do it through your the app, too. Okay. I, I mean, don't know if you have to no, be... No, there's in, an actual link. I don't know if it's... I haven't but, seen but what if they've done on the app. No, but, but if you're making a reservation for... For one of the, no, like a restaurant, a restaurant there because it's going to work oh, the same yeah, as a restaurant yeah. reservation. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. So, so sh- as long as you have not an, available, they're not available. Yeah, as long as you have an account, right? You can make the reservation. So, starting on the twenty fourth, you will go on to there to make a reservation for both Oga's Cantina and Savi's Workshop in order to get into those. Now, interesting about this that it says that if you have a reservation for Oga's Cantina or Savi's Workshop, you don't have to get. A virtual queue boarding pass. Oh, uh, that will your reservation will be your boarding pass, uh, virtual boarding pass. Uh, that's what it says right here. A reservation for Oga's Canteen or Savage Workshop means you don't have to get a separate Galaxy's Edge virtual queue boarding pass. Got it. You can enter Galaxy's Edge an hour before your Oga's or Savage reservation. So that's like um, when they were saying that if uh, you had a reservation to go into Galaxy's Edge. But the park was at capacity, you can still get in because you had that reservation to get in. So it's, well, it's, it's kind of like thing. if the... I don't think that came up, though, did it? Park did no, it no, capacity, no, right? no. But so. they didn't mention that. It's okay. kind of like on New Year's Eve or whatever day if they shut the gates and you show up and say, I've got a dining reservation yes. inside, they'll right. still let you Yes, in. same thing I just said. Yeah. Good right. job, Tim. <laughs> yes. So, uh, <laughs> well, you said Galaxy's Edge, but it's it's same thing they've always done for but the But they said the that park. in the beginning when the reservation stuff started. Right. So anyway, so yeah, so make sure you guys note that, that if you make a reservation uh, for Ogas or Savvy's through the uh, reservation system, that you won't have to get a virtual queue boarding pass because obviously, because you can't really guarantee that you'd be able to get a boarding pass for exactly the time that you uh, made the reservation for. I think that's the whole point of that, and uh, it makes sense. Reservations, as I said, will be able to be made beginning seven h eight eight seven a.m. each day using the Disneyland app or at Disneyland.com slash Cantina or Disneyland.com slash Savvy's Workshop. You'll need to have a credit card connected to your account to make the reservation. The Savi's reservation is good for a lightsaber builder and two guests, which is what it's been, I assume. Why right? it was two one? It was one builder guess. and okay, so they are expanding it to builder and two guests now. Okay, uh, as opposed to the one guest uh, is what it's been. There is enough for two people additional. Yeah, just uh, get behind you. Yeah. You'll yeah. need to make a non-refundable full deposit in advance in order to make the reservation for the. Two hundred dollar lightsaber lightsaber building experience in Savvy's workshop. So in other words, not a deposit. You just have to pay. Yeah, it's <laughs> not really. And with that one, it's not really a deposit. That one, you're basically just paying the whole two hundred dollars. Now, if you are planning on, if you are planning on, probably one of if one of the other people decides that they want to get one, I don't know if you need a uh, separate reservation or if they can just hop in no, on yours. And, no, they're gonna. So they to, would have to make a separate reservation. Yeah. So. Because uh, they have to pay. Yeah, yeah, so it's not really a deposit. I guess it the, just it guarantees you're going to show up, that's for sure. Yes. Uh, now, as far as Oga's Cantina goes, 
the reservation can have an unlimited number of guests, uh, which I think is interesting because then you can just like, hey, party at the cantina. <laughs> yeah, we don't need no virtual boarding passes. Let's go. <laughs> if you're in there, come and join us. Uh, each person, though, on your Ogo's canteen reservation requires a $10 deposit. So if there's Damn. 10 of you, that's a $100 deposit. The fully refundable deposit will be forfeited for each no-show on the reservation. So in other words, if you make a reservation for eight people, you pay $80. And if five people shows up, bye-bye $30. It's just like anywhere else, basically, yeah. Yeah. I wonder what they'll do with the Savi's ones. Like if you are late or you didn't show up for some reason, would they allow you to reschedule it? Don't be. I'm not going to be, but I'm saying, like, what if that happens to someone? Then you're asked down. Are they going to be out of their two... I hope so. But things happen. You no. Know? Yeah, people get in car accidents. and well, Then people they can cancel like their have... reservation because you should be able to cancel reservations. Uh, hold on. I made this. It's, I'll see if it says. I don't know if it has. No, it doesn't say anything. Obviously, the general deal is don't let that happen. But what would they do if you had paid the $200? Obviously, they're going to let you re re work your reservation. Maybe it might, might have to be a different day. But Maybe. It depends on if you do it how far... I don't know. It's probably to the discretion of whoever the person is on the phone or whoever you talk to, as usual. Uh, for each Oga's reservation, you'll need to add the full name of every person on your party, so you obviously would have to have pretty much planned ahead who you're going to have with you uh, going. You have to have every name for the reservation. Uh, I guess that makes sense. If you're going to have to pay the $10 per person, you better have some names. <laughs> <laughs> better know who owes you money. Exactly. Uh, the reservation holder won't need to link every person's ticket to their account because it'll basically be your responsibility. Uh, so if people don't show up, you're, that's you on, that's you out the money unless they already paid you. Uh, bar patrons are limited to 45 minutes in the canteen and a two-drink maximum. Oh, now they're saying it's only 45 minutes. You know, what I'm realizing is a lot of these things they're just saying and none of it's enforced. Uh, they were talking about the lightsabers. You're not supposed to... How many people had lightsabers out yesterday just waving them around Yeah, because you're not supposed to have them out. And they were pretty much everyone it, with a lightsaber had it as, out. As soon as the sun goes down, the lightsabers come out. Yeah. That's the way it is. Pretty much every time. Yeah. That's how I've seen it two or three times now. Uh, and I kept thinking about, oh, Anthony's going to have a field day with this, you know? Uh, just a note that I wanted to say that I had heard that there was a lot of people trying to get around the whole uh, true drink maximum by uh, bouncing around the cantina. like Different stations. Different stations. Uh, and I guess that they, well, they uh, are uh, st- uh, sta- uh, stamping st- you. Stamping or uh, putting a hole in your uh, wristband now. Uh, for every drink you buy, so that way they can keep track of drinks, so that way you can't try to take buy more than the two drinks. Uh, I don't know how they'll do that, uh, enforce the uh, two drink uh, maximum when you have no wristband anymore. So I mean, when we were there, she said, "Oh, you guys seem fine," and like let us order another drink. It was not a big deal. I mean, and we were there for like almost 2 hours. 45 minutes is uh, is a long time to drink two drinks. I mean, and it, well, it also takes forever to nobody, get served in there too. Yes. Yeah, so You've been inside to, yet, Diggs? No. It's like I mean, it's like you're at a dive bar on club night and like you can't get to the front because everybody's like pushing their way up. And there's only four booths, like maybe eight total booths that seat like 10 or 12 people. Uh I mean, eight to 12 people maybe. And those booths are premium commodity. You kind of have to make new friends to get a seat at one. Uh, just a note that uh, something I've, I've heard about the cantina is that they, they only have Bantha coasters left apparently unless they've already, unless this, unless they've already gotten in more at the time of the, you hear this, uh, they only had Bantha coasters left. And if you aren't at the bar, you have to ask for them specifically. Uh, just something that I've, uh, that I read, uh, third party from cast members. I'm I sure they'll other, get a new I have other. Coasters, uh, it says more are coming, but haven't arrived yet. They anticipate later this week, which would be uh, later this week, presumably by the time you hear this podcast. They might have them, they might not. Uh, just know for anybody that's going this weekend, uh, Savvy's Junk Shop, they're, they have been cutting the line off super early. They've been going way over time with the reservations, taking less reservations. If you want one, make a beeline. 
The only way you were getting in yesterday, so sometime in the last weekend, the 11 a.m. line took 20 minutes to fill reservations. The 8 p.m. took less than 10 because the reservations from the 5 p.m. group are running long. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, might as well wait. They're making some money, dude. Hell yeah, they are. <laughs> $200 each of this shit. What I was didn't, it, 14 stations? I never expected it. It to be when I heard twenty two hundred dollars, I'm like, well, there's no way they're going to do that kind of business. I don't even think they. they I don't even think that they've sold that many of the build the shitty build of sabers. <laughs> okay, just a few other notes about other things that uh, this is all uh, once again third party from cast members and stuff. So mm. some of it may be out of date. Some of it may be bullshit. Uh, probably not <laughs> bullshit, but uh, <laughs> since it's uh, coming third uh, party from a manager, but. Uh, the uh, just a note on the sporks, which obviously we know now have been replaced with by regular forks. They were replaced with plastic sporks, and then now they've been replaced by regular silverware that looks like it comes from Plaza. Rumors coming through the merchandise and everything is that uh, they're planning on uh, coming back with plastic sporks that look like the original metal ones. Of course. Uh, to uh, make up for the fact that that way, you if you want to take it, have at it. It's plastic. We don't give a shit. <laughs> so basically, that's the plan. So, so basically, if you were one of the people that lifted up some of these sporks, and uh, you know, just save them because like you're never gonna get one ever again. No. So uh, just to note that at some point, if this is true, uh, you'll probably see these by next month, maybe. Uh, however long it takes to, for them to get them created, I guess. Uh, send out the order. A uh, just a note for the creature shop for the uh, for that uh, the loth cats have apparently sold out for now. Uh, once again, one of the another another one of those things that I will uh, repeat. Uh, they didn't expect to sell that well, so they didn't sell. They didn't order that many. Which one is so this? So the loth cat, uh, the stuff, the plush loth cat, oh. the stuffed loth cat. Well, uh, it's apparently cool are all uh, sold out. Oh, so when I I went by the way to the. Docking Base 7, and I asked for a spork, and I was told that um, travelers have uh, all taken them to sell them on the black market. Ah, <laughs> well, that's funny. That's funny. Uh, note, uh, and I am completely, utterly uh, disappointed and upset and pissed off and saddened but to report that the, uh, the, the very nice gift cards are now all sold out. Uh, apparently, according to all reports, they were sold out as of last Saturday. And apparently, as of today, some people are posting that they're back. Really? <laughs> That's what Elizabeth told me. Okay, so I don't know. Because uh, apparently, according to what it says, the initial, there was an initial run of 15,000. Uh, they're not sure if they're coming back in stock. Uh, and once again, mainly because they didn't think they would sell like they did. I'm like, well, I don't know what you were expecting. Wow, that is heavy. And wow, that's awesome. I just threw one at him. Uh, Re- Rebecca just said she just saw somebody po- post a picture of some too. So yeah, uh, supposedly they're back today. So they're back. Uh, hopefully uh, for a little bit longer, not long enough for me to at least uh, get somebody to buy me one. Shit, you got to put a hundred uh, bucks on it. Though. I know that's the thing. Otherwise, I would have already have done it because that right now is a kind of a priority. Uh, the, the thing I'm thinking is that eventually they are going to run out of the metal ones and they will switch them to plastic. Is what I predict. I think so. I mean, what do you think this costs to make? 50 cents? No, no. And and a lot of people are going to put their money on them. and like picture of one today. Yeah. Uh, So, I don't know. I just, I really still think that they're going to switch to plastic at some point because it's probably a lot easier to uh, make uh, because it's basically be like uh, the same material as like a regular gift card at some point. But we'll see. I mean, I'm really hoping that they stick around. I'm going to have to get one. Otherwise, I'll be really, really upset, and it makes me a little bit happier to know that they are back. So, uh, moving on to something near and dear to Tim's heart, and that is Kyber Crystals. Mm. Uh, according to this, uh, which could be already wrong, yellow and white crystals were completely sold out as of the weekend. Oh. Uh, they didn't think they were going to be popular at all once again. Uh that's like literally the opposite of what they should have done. Supposedly, another run has been ordered, but they aren't sure when they're going to get those. Now, we went into their... Uh, yesterday? Did we go in there yesterday? I didn't, did, no. did you see yellow and white? When I went in, they didn't have any. All I saw was the blue and the red, and uh, I think that's all I saw. 
Uh, so speaking of red, that brings us to the black kyber crystals, which apparently uh, every single manager and every single employee in uh, merchandise employee hate them. Uh, they're not issued. They're, the management is not happy, apparently, with the issues they have caused. Uh, apparently, yeah, you just got people just sitting in there with their phones, like looking at every single one. Well, apparently there are no more black kyber crystals. Long story, they were all pulled from the shelves last Wednesday uh, between a cast member being pushed over for people trying to find a black one <laughs> and, and nearly out. taking out an entire display by people crowding the display, uh, people camping out in the shop so others can't get in. Uh, to them being scalped on eBay, all of those things all together. Disney is not happy. They've pulled all the black kyber crystals from the bags before they even hit the floor. So you're saying if I uh, could get one for like 300 bucks, I should buy it? Uh, yes, probably. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, although I probably wouldn't because, uh, wait. <laughs> uh, one apparently slipped through last weekend, but cast members were asking people to choose one as there was no more black ones. Uh, they're really thinking having them at all. Or they're thinking of changing the packaging to be completely like a blind packaging. The true blind packs, uh, which I don't know if that means that uh, having All true blind packs blind. for everything, Ugh. which I think would be actually really cool. If you ask me, I think that's what they should have done to begin with. Uh, that just creates a bunch of problems. If somebody buys a build your own and they really want, or they're buying the holocrons and they really want to just get all of them, that's... And then they got to worry about trading and all this other nonsense. I mean, Disney doesn't care. Because either that or it's just made like, basically making them all. They would make them all blind. Pa- uh, I don't know why you would make all of them where you can see them and then just change the packaging for the black. Cause it seems silly to go through the trouble of changing the packaging they for the black. They just release a black one and then they can make more money selling all those. I know, right? Because uh, otherwise, they're if they just change the packaging to maybe be like uh, darker where you can't see through it. Well, that's. You know, that's all they have to do. They do something that's not... They never do it the, the smartest thing. If they're really mad about people hoarding for them and selling them, their value would be negated for these things if they just released them. Right. Right? Well, that's the thing. I just... I don't understand. Oh, they're talking about all this stuff that's selling out, a bunch of other stuff I've heard that sold out, you know, thought that the, the gift card had sold out. You know, I'm like... And they're talking about, oh, well, we didn't expect it to... St- the popularity. Well, I'm like, what the hell did you expect? Shit. What were you expecting? I mean, seriously. Uh, are we going to hear this shit on uh, when? Uh, our, our, uh, well, it'll already have happened, but uh, those people who are going to be going to the parks uh, yesterday to have gotten their DJ Rex uh, Funko Pop, uh, are they going to say that uh, they didn't have enough of those, I suppose, probably, or especially after they probably allow 10 per person or some bullshit like that? It might be 20. It might be 20. What? Uh, the DJ Rex pop comes out tomorrow in case you didn't already see it. Oh. Uh, just apparently, as of today, Ahsoka's sabers are sold out. Uh, Luke's lightsaber. I know some of the other sabers that uh, just uh, just constantly things Mace, keep selling out. Probably. Uh, it's just like, mm, I mean, I understand if you guys said, would have said that it just, for things to sell out before the grand opening even happens is bullshit. You should never have had the reservation and the soft, quote-unquote, soft opening period if you knew that you didn't have enough merchandise to get to opening. Or maybe have it this, the, this long. The land isn't even open yet, technically, and there's shit that's sold out. How unfair is that to people who couldn't get reservations or who already had, uh, couldn't go on, can't go on vacation until July or when whatever? When I was there on uh, the first of June, um, they were they had all of them in the morning, and I was like, "Oh, I'll come back later, so I don't have to carry these things." And it turns out that they're they had sold out already at that point. However, we were back two days later, and then I was back a couple days after that. And what I've seen as I've gone several times is that things will be sold out on one day or at one time of the day, and the next time I go back, they'll be back. As far as lightsabers go. Uh, the the bigger ticket items. I think what they're doing is they're holding back items so that they're they have enough for the whole reservation period. Um, with some things, with the gift cards, they just sold out, and then that's it. But with the let's say Kylo Ren, right? The Kylo Ren lightsaber was gone. The Mace Windu at one point was gone. The Ahsokas were gone. 
But then I went back again and they were at them again. It's just inexcusable for them to have uh, merchandise sell out and not be there on the 24th for the official opening. Like it's like he said. The, well, maybe they're holding it so they have them. The soft opening slash reservation period never should have been as long as it was or never should have been, period, if they thought that there was a chance that all of this merchandise... Uh, you know, it just shows how stupid and, and uh, ignorant they are if they didn't think that, oh, I don't know, people were going to sell shit on eBay for five times what it's worth, that people were going to steal fancy sporks from the restaurant and steal, to sell that shit on eBay, that everything that basically can be lifted from uh, Galaxy's Edge, from menus to coasters to maps to freaking... Uh, sporks uh, that was going to be taken from Galaxy's Edge and sold uh, everywhere, po- every way possible. I just don't know how they can act like that. They're so freaking ignorant when that shit goes on uh, the rest of the year in every other part of the park. Well, the other thing that's weird too is that they're hyper conservative when it comes to their ordering processes. Oh yeah, they order the absolute least amount that they think. The only they person might that's sell. worse. The only person that's worse is probably Best Buy. <laughs> I can't speak for Best Buy. <laughs> But I knew I do know that when they order items that they could probably sell fifty thousand, they're always going to order twenty five. That just, way they don't. Like I know, just got word right now that stuck I just them. got word right now that all of the uh, first or all of the personality chips for droids except the first order are sold out. See, so it's like you just have different pieces of merchandise all over Galaxy's Edge that are just keep selling out. And like you said, either they have like a hoard of it in the back that they're selling to make sure that they have enough just so they could say they had enough for the weekend of or for the 24th in that week or whatever. And then as soon as it sells out, they're like, well, screw everybody else, I guess. I mean, they have to have another batch coming in for those things. I mean, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if the 25th they have uh, if they plan on having the uh, the sippers for the 24th, the uh, the the milk sippers for the 24th. Maybe that's what they've been holding them for. Yeah. I mean, there's a there's a point where it gets so long after the after the uh, thing opened that it's like, well, maybe they're just saving saving it so that way at least those at least those people will have something in case they might run out of. Have you heard anything about them running out of? Uh, Mouse droids? No. There's there's plenty. There's also plenty in... Which, uh, the popcorn bucket or the remote control mouse droid? Yes, the popcorn bucket. Well, they have another mouse droid. Well, that one, we, they've always had that one. There's always lines over there. For the popcorn? Yes. Well, yeah. Since there's only one place to buy it, which is kind of just as bad as... Literally only one popcorn thing. And it's, I know. That's just as bad as like when they would have the uh, Star Wars popcorn buckets and uh, you could only get them in the Tomorrowland popcorn stand because it's the only one. With so, what's, what's weird about what they did with the popcorn here in Batu at Gazuntite uh, is that they they created an actual storefront that could have been used for merchandise, and they are selling the popcorn out of it. I don't understand why they did that, especially when a lot of the space they have is back. It's behind the counter, and they it's literally popcorn. That's all they have is the popcorn and some drinks. They don't need a lot of space, but their back behind is larger. I think eventually they're going to have to create new popcorn stands that can move around like they do or have a stationary area out in the land because there's plenty of extra area where they could sell them from or pop up a stand, and then they could turn that other space into something else. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Right. Um, Some of the decisions they've made are contradictory to the way way that they normally do things, and it's a little... And some of it is right on brand, as we've said yeah. so many times uh, with what they usually do things, that you would think that they would have learned their lesson by now. But you, no. You okay? No. I was uh, trying to channel Lewis Black for a second, but I can never get it right because I just can't get as angry as he does, uh, believe it or not. All right, so when we're not worrying about merchandise, let's go for a run. Uh, it's a smuggler's run. Oh, because I was like, I didn't feel like running right now. I didn't bring no, my running shoes. No, that's okay. Oh, well. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, Tim and I, uh, we went on an adventure again, and uh, we were in smuggling some runnings or whatever we're doing. But anyway, uh, Tim got some information on um, basically how many pods they are in the... Yeah, well, you're a pod. <laughs> and like, not, uh... not, not tie pods. Oh. No, we're not doing that stuff. Oh, like uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers pods? Maybe. Maybe. How, okay. how many Millennium Falcon cockpits are there? Now, I'm going to let you 
guess because we know the answer. So this is the Anthony's game. We're going to let Anthony guess how many cockpits he thinks there are. Uh, and I'll provide you with some preliminary information. And then if you can't guess it, then I'll give you a hint. Uh, if you can't guess it, then I'll follow it with a hint that you'll definitely get it with. When you, when you enter the Millennium Falcon and you're going to be greeted by Hondo, there are two sides. My friends! Yes. So when you go on down either, either of those sides, the situation is identical on both. So we're just going to talk about one of them. Eventually you go down a hallway and you enter the uh, living quarters where the couch is and the chess table. And out of that room, there are three hallways. One in one direction, two in the other direction. So you know that there are now six hallways. Based on that information, how many cockpits do you believe there are? I mean, I guess you'd have to think how many in each one and then add them up. Is there different levels? No, just one. It's one level, and each each side has three separate hallways that lead to an entry point. And that's where uh, Hondo gives you more. Yeah, you get a fur- instruction. further instruction from Hondo before you enter the cockpit. The uh... trying really hard not to say it right now. <laughs> no, I was going to say that's the video of Hondo. Yes, the one with the Arcarni Hondo. Yes, and if the ride breaks, it's where you see Hondo telling you, "Oh, you're back. Uh, uh, we've made some blah 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 for you." It's a different video if you do that. Well, I mean, first guess would be obviously uh, six, but that's not right. That can't be right. There wouldn't... I mean, how many groups go down each hallway? Well, each hallway has one section of waiting, and then when they're done, you enter, and then they bring in the next waiting group. So basically, you're wondering... What you need to guess is how many how many cockpits are off each hallway. And then you Four. multiply. So you're thinking four on each wheel, essentially, and then that wheel becomes... So you multiply four times six. So you're saying you think there are 24. That's probably wrong. That's too many. Very wrong. That's too many. Yes. Twelve. So you're thinking that each one has two. Don't do the math. Just tell me if it's wrong or <coughs> wrong. Okay, well, then tell me what it is. Uh, well, it's, it's higher than your first guess. Oh, it's higher than the 20-whatever. Four. Or, or, so well, you have to do uh, math. There are six hallways, which means there are six cockpit wheels. How many are you? How many on each wheel? I don't know. I haven't been there. Okay. Well, no, but I've given you the information. So, uh, the you think the answer the answer is blowing in the wind. The number times the six hallways is the answer. That's your clue. It's the answer. Basically, what he's saying is X. Is the answer? <laughs> yeah, no, but it's. I, I know the forty-two. Answer. Correct. That's that was your clue, and I knew you'd get it. It's the answer. Is it really forty-two? It yes. is. Each hallway, there's six hallways, and there are seven, which is what messed with me. I thought there would be a, an even number, but there are seven on each wheel. So while the ride's going, they they turn. And the next one loads and unloads, and then they're continuing to turn, and then the next one loads and unloads as the Weird. ride goes on. I wonder how home. that works. You what? I wonder how that works. Basically, it's like a record, and it spins, because you do not... Right round? One of maybe those, right round? I don't know. Maybe, maybe like right record. left. One of those. Anyway, but you don't exit where you enter. It looks like you do, because I was looking at it yesterday. Because when you're in that little hallway where he's giving you more instructions, and on the ground it tells you to line up, how to line up, it has the same stuff, but it's not the same. Sometimes you exit thing. where you enter. On Saturday I did. Or no, no excuse it, me, it's, yesterday it's, it's I did. It's a different set. It looks like it, it's the same thing, you place you enter, but it's not. Because you come out and you go, you, uh, go to the left, and you're at the exit. So... It's trust me. It's just a set. It looks like the same place you enter at the entry point, but it's not. All right. So yesterday, Miles and I were doing the app, uh, playing the Disney Park app with the Galaxy's Edge. They had missions, which is really cool. I finally got the hang of it and how to work it and do the missions. And uh, one of the missions is, of course, being a pilot because Hondo needs pilots. Now, I figured out on Friday that you cannot do the game. Uh, the mission with Hondo 
unless you're waiting in line for an hour. You have to actually wait the whole time because Hondo tells you to do, to do certain things. He tells you, he'll say, okay, well, I need to know where you are. Are you behind the Falcon? And you say yes. And one of the missions there is uh, scanning the crates. So you, he passes you on to this other person, and she needs you to scan four crates so she can see what's in there, and you have to scan all four. Well, if you're not waiting in the long line, you're not going to be able to do that, especially if it's like a 20-minute wait, you know, because you're not, unless you like, I'm just going to do this and let people go in front of you, oh, okay. then you can, but it's going to take a while to scan those crates and, and put in what you got and then for her to start talking to you. Yeah, a lot of the a lot of the games are uh, specifically uh, kind of formatted that for being for standing in line cuz I remember uh, one time I was trying uh, trying the uh, the uh, game at uh, Midway Mania and uh, I didn't have wasn't standing there wasn't really a line so I didn't get to finish the game. I didn't have nearly enough time to do the game because I was I didn't wasn't in line so yeah so it's the same yeah. way with that uh you do another thing when you get into the basically the i forgot what it's called but when you get into inside where they're fixing an engine and everything uh, there's another thing you do in there then they have these uh you uh he gives you uh your fake identity and you have to remember uh what you are what creature you are if you're male or female your height and then and like what color is your eyes and all that kind of stuff you got to go through that. And the thing that sucks about it is uh, like the Wi-Fi went out in there. So I was stuck. It said, oh, good job and everything. And then I was like, well, where's the rest? And it wouldn't go. So I had to redo the Wi-Fi. And then I was back at that point again. So I had to answer those questions again. Then you get to behind the Falcon. And now he's asking you how many uh, blast shields are there, how many uh Hoses are connected, and you got to answer all those. And once again, the line just went too quick to do that. And you're trying to do all these things and trying to look at the window when you get uh, past another um, the turn back. And so I'm trying to do things. Now you ha- I had cast member yelling at me to hurry and get inside. And you're like, well, why are you yelling at me? You know, I'm trying to do this game, and now I got to you know get yelled at to go inside. And so it, it is very hard to uh, complete that mission unless it's a long line and. Or you're just going to do the game and then enter uh, the Falcon when uh, you're done doing it. So uh, one time I was doing it and it said uh, that basically I didn't give them enough information and they didn't need me as a pilot. <laughs> I got turned down, dude. I got denied. Dirty. <laughs> exactly. But, you're uh, fired. <laughs> I wasn't even hired. <laughs> <laughs> so after the game, basically, though, but since you're still on there, uh, Hondo does give you credits. And uh, he gave me like 7,400 credits or something. So you still make some money, but it'd been better. It would have been better if I could have somehow completed the game. But it's pretty cool. I mean, the game's pretty cool. And then there's a lot of missions you can do. And Miles was going back and forth doing this mission. He goes, oh, I got to go over here. I got to go over there. And he was having a blast with that. And then hacking the droids and everything and the panels. And it's pretty good. So... Like we said last week, there's plenty to do in Galaxy's Edge. Even though there's only one attraction to go on, you can get on the app and uh, play the games, do the mission. And one of the bad things about it is uh, a lot of the crates are on the ground, so people are using those crates to sit down. So when you're trying to scan it, people are like, tell people get up. <laughs> exactly, they're your way. And like there's this one guy, his head's in the way. I'm trying to scan one of the crates, and yeah, it just that's one of the downfalls of it, but. And then people are looking at you like you're the asshole. Exactly. But really, it's like they're in the way. Yeah. yeah. It didn't say the bench or anything. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the app is awesome. Uh, try the games out. Try the missions. And um, it does keep you uh, entertained while you're in the line. So uh, good job on that. Just like I said, you have to basically wait the whole length of the line if it's an hour or so. It would be better. And it would probably go by pretty quickly if uh, you were doing the game. So. I like the app. It's pretty cool. Hey, Anthony, guess what? What? There's a new store that opened up on Main Street. Is it new, though? <laughs> <laughs> or is it old? I think it's old, but it's new, but it's not a store. Is it but... 64 years old? Uh, <laughs> not the store. No? No. Well, the the, the building, the building, or the, the inside, uh, 
I don't know. Is there a silver? Is there a gold pole out front? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, there's been some controversy this week where uh, with the uh, with the uh, Disneyland's Main Street Cinema, uh, where they decided they thought they'd be a good idea. You know, somebody uh, part of this genius uh, merchandising crew that we've been talking about, uh, probably the same idiots that uh, screwed up everything in Galaxy's Edge. Uh, decided that it'd be a good idea to put merchandise in, in inside of the Main Street Cinema, because you know nothing says watching old Mickey Mouse cartoons like shopping for merchandise that you can get in any other store in the right. Place. Uh, I don't know. Uh, so yeah, they put merchandise in there that uh, not even exclusive merchandise to the store or anything, just merchandise you can get at any other store. And uh, what do they figure that people are going to walk in there and they just, oh, we might let's buy something. Right. They And then they put a uh, they put a sign out front that says uh, cartoons and collectibles and then encouraged visitors to come in and see what's new. Uh, the uh, outrage was uh, to be predicted. Uh, and this is one outrage that I actually agree for once agree with because. There's merchandise everywhere. Now, and we just, have one virgin forest within all of Disneyland that has no merchandise in it. And that's always been the Main Street Cinema. Now, I granted that, you know, people probably hardly ever go in there because, number one, it, it seems creepy. <laughs> it's always seemed kind of creepy. Uh, I don't even know if I had ever, if I had went in there like a handful of times before I started working there. And then I think I went in there more times while I started working there than I've ever been in there. And that was just to clean the brass. Now, but uh, do you think if it was a better executed that you would have a different opinion? Like if they had taken some cool collectible stuff, put them in some cases that are below the line of the of the cartoons. I think uh, collectibles that have to do with those cartoons. Yeah, Mickey collectibles or old timey. Uh, yeah, vintage Mickey, stuff like that. Yeah, I think uh, the execution was just very, very uh, dumb. And then there, uh, just a couple days later, apparently, upon being questioned by it, uh, their response for uh, the reasoning that they did it was to get more traffic inside the Main Street Cinema. Okay. Because Did I pretty you do a better job then. <laughs> exactly what I said. So uh yeah, they put merchandise you can get anywhere else inside of the main street cinema where people don't really normally expect merchandise. Uh, yeah. real quick, I just want to say that um reading this article here it says that uh, back in nineteen ninety eight Walt Disney World they actually uh did that. Yeah, theirs has been closed for quite some time. So I don't know. That would be the but thing. They have a barber shop. Just saying. I mean, that's the thing, though. If you're going to put merchandise in there, don't pretend like you're not doing anything. Don't say, put some merchandise in there and pretend like nobody's going to notice. <laughs> if you're gonna, if you want to turn the shit into a shop, close it down and turn it into a shop. You can still have the have the uh, videos playing on the walls if you want, but open the entrance up like a shop. You know, take out the where take out the creepy black curtains and the is the turnstile still there? No, they took those out. Okay, uh, just you know, take out the because yeah, you, you still have the thing in the middle, right? The, yeah, the ticket booth. Yeah, uh, take out the ticket booth, open up the entrance, and uh, just have it be an open venue, and then head, turn it into a shop. Then, if that's what you're gonna do, do it. Don't don't pretend like that's not what you're doing because that's what you're doing. Uh, stop it. Uh, but where it is as of today, today, at least, as of today, Wednesday, uh, we got word that the shit's gone. Well, supposedly uh, Disney caved in on what they did and because uh, of the, everyone just saying, hey, you know, this is stupid. You shouldn't be doing that. And this is it's saying that it, the shop will be uh, removed and be back to what it was. Uh, I don't think that the turnstiles are going to be coming back. But I don't know if this is true or not, because I, I didn't go there today. I haven't seen any uh, pictures of it, but supposedly it, uh, they took this stuff down last night. Uh, uh, we were there in the park yesterday, 
And when I walked out of Main Street, you know, the stuff was still going on. They still had the things in there, of course. But they're saying that it was pulled back or, you know, taken out. But I don't know. I haven't, uh, you know, checked on that. Uh, like I said, if this isn't the last week, we'll probably have heard of it. I mean, like I said, if you're going to turn into a shop, just do it. You know, don't say, don't sneak some merchandise in there and be like, where'd that come from? Oh, wait, what? <laughs> Lion King? Yeah, I figures that uh, there's all this Lion King stuff going on when I can't go over there. It's really sucky. It's jerks. Jerk face. Have you guys gone to see Tail? Yeah, yeah and I will uh, talk about that after we talk about this. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Hey, AP Corner. You know what? I uh, What got, the hell is it for? I... I, I, I'm glad you asked that because I was notified about that. I believe it was uh, the other day. It was on Monday. And I was like, oh, well, what's this? I go, why are we having an AP corner? And um, I still don't know why. I, I think it's because of Lion King. <laughs> so, uh, uh, again, this year, uh, well, not this year, but again, the AP corner is going to be over by a Silly Symphony Swings in DCA. And um, we get a sipper, an AP sipper. We don't know how much it costs. It's a mug. It's a mug. <laughs> I don't know. They call it a uh, they call it a sipper, but then in the picture it says it's a mug. So I don't think they know what it is. Well, it's an AP mug. Then I don't know. But yeah, it looks like the Moana one that came out. Uh, yeah, actually, I was telling him that I thought it, it's uh, in size and in design it's a lot closer to the actually the uh the one that they had at Trader Sam's that you can get the non-alcoholic oh, drink in okay. and then they were selling in that one again uh somewhere that where they were selling it more i forget where it was i think it was over at uh maybe at um at uh hideaway i think they were selling it over there or something for more with something in it or i don't know anyways yeah it reminds me of that but uh it's an ocarina cuz you know nothing says lion king like an ocarina. Is that the Macarena? Of time. <laughs> oh, wait, because that's Zelda. Because nothing says ocarina. Like Zelda, not Lion King. What the hell does Lion King have to do with ocarinas or Zelda or time or or what? What were we talking about? <laughs> it's a mug. Wait, yes. no, it's a sipper. I don't know. We're confused. We're confused. Go buy it. It's at the AP corner. We don't know how much it is. He'll let you know. We'll let you know. We'll let you know. Uh... You can look at it. It'll be on the episode photo if you want it uh, to add. Break off the handle and add it to your uh, Zelda collection. Miles might do that. uh, Or you could just go online and probably buy an actual Zelda ocarina that's glass. Now, uh, I was at the parks on Friday with uh, Dan, the mailman. And, uh, hey, we checked out the the tail of the Lion King. Okay. And, uh, yeah, it's really good. I it's like just it. Just one tail? Just, there's only just one tail. The one. There's only one tail. Lion King only has one tail. How many animals are in the show? Um, a lot. Yeah? Yes. How many tails do you think are counted? I did not so. even look at their tails. Well, <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, if it's like lions and tigers and bears, they all have tails. Well, it's the a tail, you know, T-A-L-E. Right. A story. I'm more concerned with the T-A-L-E. Yeah, I know. It was all about the tail. Or tail. I don't know. Anyway, it was a. a it's really cool. It's a, the production is, is done really nicely. Uh, the singing is awesome. The choreography is great. Everything about it is good. I, I really enjoy it. It's not something that like uh, why they have this here. It's a, it is about twenty minutes long. Uh, right there in Paradise Park. I I don't know actually what they do with. Um, because it's a big set. It's really, they have a lot of, the structure is tall. So I'm wondering about uh, World of Color. What do they do about that? They just leave it there. Too bad you can't see. You can't see. Because after the last show, I didn't see, and they were getting ready for World of Color. I didn't see anyone taking anything down or anything. But I didn't stay there that, that long to see if they actually take anything down, those structures down. But I'm just wondering about that. And next time I go, I'll probably try to check that out. But yeah, the, the, the Tale of the Lion King is really good. And it has all your favorite songs from there, and the the actors are just great. I How think. does it compare to the parade? I actually would say uh, it's two different things. No, I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, because I mean, the parade you have it was a parade. Yeah, you have parade. You got the characters, but these are not the characters. This is more like the Broadway, right? You know, portraying the characters, right? 
And um, it's great. Yeah, it's an awesome show. So if you guys haven't seen that yet, head over there. And I believe, like Dan said, there's five or six showings of it during the day. So I would venture to say that uh, DCA is becoming the place to go for uh, very ethnic performances. Right. Uh, between like, uh, you know, uh, Lunar New Year with all the Asian performances and then uh, Viva La Navidad with all the... Uh, love it. With all of the, uh, the 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 performances of those nations, and then now we have the Tale of the Lion King and getting some of that, uh, you know, African influence and stuff into uh, over there. So uh, uh, Disney's California Adventure, uh, not so much anymore, which uh, we've talked about for a right. long time. Uh, getting even more international uh, than uh, than ever. Uh, and they do have uh, the benches out there, so if you guys get there quick, you know, early enough, you can get a seat, or um, you'll just have to be just standing out there. I was standing out to the side, you know, by the rail. It wasn't no big deal. If you don't got no benches, then you ain't got no bitches. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> check, <Okey> out, <laughs> check out Tell of the Lion King. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That didn't come out how I was planned. All right, so real quick, as we were in the park yesterday, uh, you remember um, when Jungle Cruise went down for a refurb and they added the netting on the boats? Mm -hmm. I do. Okay. Well, Miles and I went on junk, uh, Jungle Cruise, and the boat we were on didn't have that netting. Basically, they put the netting where your arm would sit, so you can't like put your arm out there. Well, the boat didn't have any netting. I was like, oh, well, maybe this is just one that didn't get netted. I don't know. As we were coming back, Spider Man didn't get over there. No. So as we were coming back to the dock, there was all the boats that were you know not in use. They didn't have the netting either. So have they discontinued the netting. I don't know. I mean, obviously because they don't have it anymore. I just thought that was kind of too many guest complaints about it. <laughs> I don't even know if I went on it after they added the netting. Uh, yeah, I've, I've been on it a few times. And can I, you even see anything? Is it weird? No, the netting is just basically if you're sitting down the boat. It's so your arm can't go out. Right. It's just kind of like arm there, level. Yeah, because there's the opening on, above that pole that you can put your arm off if you want to. But this was just... But now they're all gone. Yeah, it's apparently. gone. Then he's not there. On mm. my, I've seen like seven or eight boats that were just docked, and they didn't have it. And oh, I, I also took a picture of one of the boats. So I thought that was interesting. That's something I noticed yesterday. Mm. Another thing I noticed uh, I as I uh, had some fat time yesterday... Fat time! In the old town tonight. Yeah, what he said. I, I went to um, I went to the little red wagon corn dog cart. Ooh, and um, gotta have a wildebeest. When I was waiting in line, I noticed they had something called a snack box. Whoa, for eight ninety nine. I was like, oh well, what is in the snack box? So I really couldn't tell. Like everything was in there. I see some cheese, like a mozzarella cheese. Ooh, cheese is nice. Um, I'm not sure what else they have, in, like in the bottom. But you get a um, uncrustable peanut butter and jelly sandwich, well, with you know, made with wheat bread. Um, Whoa! There, there might be some type of salad or something, or maybe I don't even some, know if I've had a wheat uncrustable. I, I didn't notice it was wheat until right now. I looked at my picture; and it says oh, wheat bread. Um, they might be having some, maybe some carrots or something, because there's some ranch that you get with this too. But it was kind of hard to see unless I would have picked it up, but I didn't pick it up. But um, maybe they're having all these in different places now. First time I've seen it there. It's eight ninety nine for a little snack box. Looks interesting. Yeah, if you want to get something like that. So that's a couple of things I noticed yesterday. And then real quick, we talked about the forever fireworks that are back now. And um, I saw a video of some interesting um, effects and stuff with the the new the, the return of the fireworks show. So I really want to go check it out. I haven't had a chance to actually check it out on Main Street yet. So, yeah, because we were we talking about that last week, and yeah. we, we didn't have time to talk about it on the podcast. Right? Yeah. Did we talk about it on the podcast? No, I don't think we did. Okay. I just remember we were talking about it, that you said something about, uh, you were talking about it being different, and I'm like, oh, what they do? Shorten it? <laughs> and you said that you think that they actually added more effects uh, to the to it, which is interesting. Yeah, so I want to check that out. Move on it. But uh, what I heard and not... I haven't really confirmed yet, but I heard, and this I don't see why this wouldn't happen, is that on those days where um, it's windy upstairs and they have to cancel the show, that they will run Mickey's Mixed Magic. I actually did hear something about them uh, 
running Mickey's Mix Magic because uh, I saw somebody post something on Twitter about uh, that they canceled uh, Disneyland Forever and then they announced Disney's Mix Magic and then they turned around and then they immediately canceled Disney's Mix Magic because it was still too windy. <laughs> well, that don't make sense because it doesn't make have, sense. You don't have to have the fireworks, right? I don't know. I mean, because I mean, if you think about it. The fireworks. That was the whole point of mixed magic was they wouldn't so it wouldn't have to be canceled. Yeah, but the fireworks are set for forever. They're not set for Magic Mickey's mixed magic. So he's saying if it's too windy and there's no fireworks, they just do the projection. Yeah, but he said that both were canceled that one day because it was still windy. Interesting. So that that doesn't make sense. I'm, I would say that uh, something technical went wrong, wrong with that because they could, all they have to do, we know, is just put a different disc in, right, and push play. And well, you except have, for with the fireworks then. Well, I'm, yeah, you just take that off, and uh, you just have the projections going and uh, the snow and, you know, whatever. So I don't know, but um, I don't know. Maybe I'll be there one day when they cancel the forever and they run Mickey's, Mickey's Mixed Magic. Be interesting, but uh, I don't see why they couldn't do that. I mean, that'd be better than having pissed off people, and um, you know, being mad because they came all the, all the way from Albuquerque and uh, they didn't get to see the fireworks. Right. Well, and it's also a nice option for those people who uh, may not have came in the uh, springtime when Mickey's Miss Magic was playing. When since it, as I've noted many many times, it's the first major show in Disneyland not to play during summer so right. and if they're actually using it for uh, upstairs windiness then uh, <laughs> at least then it's getting some play in the summer because otherwise that's just dumb yeah and also we posted uh, last week that um, Forky is over at Paradise Pier who? Forky my guy's pretty cool oh that sport guy He's over there by... He escaped uh, from uh, Hangar 7. Probably, probably. Uh, he is over there by uh, the Lamplight Lounge, and you can go over there and take a picture with, with Forky. And we actually had a couple of our followers post pictures of their kids and posted it on Facebook uh, with Forky. So that's what pretty... do you mean their kids? That was Michael. <laughs> no, no, no. Not Michael. Uh, so, yeah, I appreciate you guys who uh, posted your pictures and shared them with us. That was pretty cool. But yeah, you can head over to the uh, Pixar Pier and take your pictures with Forky, and you can post them on Mel's Power. And you better page. hurry up before it gets too hot, because that uh, that uh, you know that Play-Doh that makes up his base is just going to melt. Uh, yes, when it gets yes. summer, that shit's just going to melt, and then he's going to be like all face pla- planted. <laughs> In fact, he won't have a face because his face is made out of Play-Doh. So, hey, so uh, you know that parking structure that they've been working on. No way. You know that parking structure that they said would open ahead of time in September? Back when they said that? And then they said, like, end of July. Remember when they said that it was uh, it was ahead of schedule for its September opening? That it was going to open, yeah, at the end of July? Well, now apparently it's ahead of schedule for the ahead of schedule opening because it's going to open uh, by the end of June. But... It's not going to open in time for Galaxy's Edge opening on June 24th. No. So you know what that means? That means that they predict that it's not that it's going to open either the 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, or 30th. Because those are the only days that take place after the opening of Galaxy's Edge, but before the end of June. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're, it's a very, uh, very uh, cryptic... Uh, oh, it's uh, going to open ahead of time, ahead of ahead of time, by the end of June... But it's not going to be ready for the opening of Galaxy's Edge. The end of June is like less than two weeks away. Oh, well, the end of June, like I said, Galaxy's Edge opens next Monday for the public. Uh, the end of June will be the following Sunday. So literally there's a week in between, a literally week in between the official opening of Galaxy's Edge on the 24th. Literally. And the, the 30th. So, uh, yeah, sometime in that week, I guess, uh, the parking structure. Now, I've I been, say basically the parking structure will open by the 28th. Now, I'm. I which mean, will before, be that, the following weekend. The end so. of June could mean by the time Galaxy's Edge opens. So, no, they said specifically the parking structure will open ahead of time by uh, the end of June, but not before the Galaxy's Edge opens. So, I'm I mean, like. Technically, they could open it level by level just to increase the parking. Well, yeah, obviously. That would be helpful. Uh, but the, it's their security system and the new tram route and all that stuff that they're really working on. Uh, there, I went down the escalator yesterday, 
and they've started doing, you remember when we were there last time we saw the little markings on the ground with the arrows and stuff? They've started doing that again. So they're pretty close. Uh, I can't figure out what they're going to do. I'm excited to see. I like the logistics of moving, you know, how they move people around and how they're going to do security and all that. I'm fascinated by it. So I'm excited to see what they're going to do. I will say this. This is appropriate time to bring it up, but the the new... You guys park at Toy Story, so you probably haven't seen it, but they have these new things on the roof inside the parking structure. They're Originally, I thought they were just sensors but ex- or some sort of camera or something, so they knew where parking spots were, but it's a sensor light system, and when you go by, the lights are all red if there's people in both spots on both sides, or they're green if it's open. Well, this yeah, we, system does not work as intended. Oh, <laughs> uh, we we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but for those who hadn't heard that, uh, yeah, and if you're saying it's not working as well, intended I necessarily, went, I can imagine that it's probably something that's uh, they have to kind of keep on top of. Uh, that well, the if they don't have the staffing, see, supposedly it's supposed to be automatic. I don't see how that's possible. But well, it's whatever. supposed to go either way. So I mean, it's it senses whether there's a car in the spots or not. There's two different directions it can go. And then on some of the levels, there's a thing that tells you how many open spots are down each row. So you know that going this way, there's going to be 24 open spots. Obviously, most of them are right at the very back. But uh, we circled around Goofy, I believe it was, like three or four times because it kept saying there's open spots. You can see the green light. You know, you go down 100 feet and you can see a green light. You get down there and there's no spot. Um, so we had to go down loop back around and then they put us on a different level. And on that level, it worked. So the, uh, the new parking structure, which is going to have uh, an extra 6,500, uh, mm-hmm. spaces to go along with the 10,000 space Mickey and friends is, More uh, than that, I think, yeah. I kind of figured, uh, I've been seeing uh, posts from different sites that, uh, the walls had come down and stuff. And then I've been, I was telling, her uh, kept saying, I'm like, well, that's going to open soon. It's going to open sooner than September. It's going to open sooner than the end of July even. And uh, it, it looks comes super to, close. It, it, from the pictures I've seen, it definitely looks super close. Uh, last week, uh, just a note, last week uh, they closed down Magic Way and areas around that so that they could install the pedestrian bridge. Uh, they had pictures of the pedestrian bridge just laying there in the middle of the street. And then now there's uh, pictures of the pedestrian bridges it's in up. place. Uh, however, they do say that the pedestrian bridge will not open until still mid-September. I don't know. They what... have to do all the work inside of Stitch, basically the Stitch lot, yeah, where so... that bridge is going to come down or something. Whatever they're going to do. So whatever reason is, the bridge is up, but you can't go on it till mid-September. They still have some work to do on that. So, uh, but otherwise, yeah, the parking structure is basically done. I thought they were going to build an actual bridge. They basically built something off-site and brought it in and like yeah. installed it. Uh, another interesting thing that I had actually, even before this report about the uh, parking structure that came out today, I had actually heard, I think, yesterday or two days ago that uh, they were closing down Catella a lot for all cast members, and all cast members would be moving to uh, Pumbaa, and Pumbaa is going to become the new cast member lot, and that was backed up today by... The report that the cast Catella cast member parking lot will become the new Bullseye parking lot to go as part of uh, Toy, Toy Story, Story expansion, and part employee parking will be moved to Pumbaa. And now, uh, thanks to the uh, long uh, the uh, Pumbaa's the one that's off Disney Way, right? That's no, yeah, that's the one that was supposed okay. to be the uh, Eastern Gateway, right? The, uh, the other side of the um, mall. It was supposed to be the Eastern Gateway parking yeah. structure. And now that that's been abandoned, the uh, it is now, now it is now the uh, cast member parking will take o- and it will take over for the Catella lot, which will now become, as I said, Bullseye parking. So now not only do you have the the uh, two the six thousand five hundred spaces in the uh, Pixar parking structure, how big's K lot? <clears throat> you have an additional two thousand one hundred fifty visitor parking spaces. For, uh, that are being added to uh, basically Toy Story. Bullseye. So that's K Lot. Well, Boys Bullseye, and then the other, uh, the back of uh, wherever you were talking, telling me about that before. Right? Is that That's already open, though, right? Jesse, yeah. The nice. back of 
Jesse Part Three. Yes, <laughs> yes. But we talked about that Jesse while, Phase Three. Yeah, we talked about that a while ago. The that the new parking for the new Toy Story parking was going to be expanded, and that's probably when we will see restrooms. Right. Uh, the, so they this, need a restroom out there. Uh, this says most likely. I think, but the the phrasing is a little bit confusing. But it basically says that the uh, that they'll be doing that will be in September is when the uh, the they'll have the fully converted over to bullseye, basically. And yeah, like he said, then you'll probably have bathrooms because who we and I mean they're gonna have tram stops over there. I'm sure in that area, but. Uh, Though there's already a b- bathroom there, so where is number that? one in the K lot, in K lot, there's already oh. a bathroom there. Well, maybe they'll just convert that. Well, it doesn't need to be converted if it's already a bathroom. It's right at the entrance to K lot where the where security is, where the gates are. Hmm. So, anyways, yeah, the uh, parking structure will be open sometime in the next week and a half. Hey, so sometimes we talk about Walt Disney World. Mostly, it's because Tim wants to for some reason. Well, which, it's uh, part of the Disney verse. He will uh, after this, because uh, what he has to talk about is connected. Uh, they did announce that uh, they're going to be doing the thing that I predicted that I thought we were going to be doing because you know it's the smart thing to do. Uh, but apparently, it's only uh, cool for Florida kids to get to do it. But uh, they announced that all APs for uh, Walt Disney World, except for gold APs, which is basically the equivalent of the uh, SoCal Selects or something like that, uh, that they would have uh, basically preview nights, previews for uh, Galaxy's Edge at uh, Hollywood Studios. Uh, now, this is very similar to uh, things that they did for the opening of Pandora. A few years ago, which is why I thought that they would do it for uh, Galaxy's Edge here. But, of course, they didn't. Instead, they gave all those previews to cast members. Uh, so, basically, uh, they're going to be doing uh, the two weeks of uh, AP previews for Galaxy's Edge at uh, Hollywood Studios in Florida. Uh, if you have AP, you just make sure you uh, look up uh, the process to doing that. Uh, if you're a gold member, then well, you should probably should have already uh, upgraded or get re- you should be upgrading, uh, even though it's uh, a year too late. But no, I'm just kidding. Uh, well, it's too late to get a cheaper price, but uh, you should still probably do it because, uh, yeah, if you want that preview. But yeah, so uh, I gotta say, oh, and there, you know, the gold members were bitching and complaining. Well, that's what you get for having the gold pass. So. <laughs> Uh, just like when Michael used to have his shitty, uh, Michael and Jose used to have their shitty so-called uh, passes and deluxe and stuff, while everybody else had good passes and they got made fun of. Well, I'm sure that everybody makes fun of gold passes in Florida, anyways. So, uh, you know, you're, you're already used to being made fun of. So, oh well. But yeah. speaking of those passes, apparently, if you uh, snoozed in between the time when they announced those AP previews. And uh, when, yesterday? Yeah. Uh, apparently you missed out on your chance to upgrade from your shitty gold pass to another higher pass or for a cheaper price because prices have now been raised. No way. Really? Disney raised prices? You know, the people of, the people of Florida, uh, the Walt Disney World crowd, so to speak, seems to be shocked by this. I think here we've gotten a little more used to it. Uh, their increases weren't as regular, if you guys, uh, uh, wouldn't you say? I think, correct me if I'm wrong, the last time they had an increase was when they renamed all the passes. Probably. Uh, yeah, I mean, if they, they raise, if they were raising them, it was like, you know, 20 or $40 or whatever, you know, like a, a little bit of an increase. Well, they did the opening of Buena Vista Street raise on them, um, basically. Some of their passes have gone up like 200 plus. Uh, Basically, they get the same kind of treatment that we got when uh, all of our passes have been going up the last few times where yeah. everything goes up a shitload. Uh, you know, you just had to be prepared for it. So as I said, anybody who, uh, between the announcement of the uh, AP previews for Galaxy's Edge, be anybody who didn't upgrade their pass from a goal to something else between then and now, well, now you're going to have to pay more. And you got to keep in mind, if you're here in our normal Disney 
our Disney verse here in Anaheim side, uh, California, you have to keep in mind that we have something like 10 times the annual pass holders that they do. It's better way to look at it is 80% of their visitors. There are people on vacation while 20% roughly are pass holders or regular floor Floridians that visit. Uh, whereas we have like almost the reverse of that. We have something like 80% of our people are pass holders or locals and there we have maybe 20% people that visit on vacation. Well, that's why I made the point that basically uh, with uh, with not so many words, the uh, soft opening reservation period of our Galaxy's Edge is essentially AP, AP preview previews. because I would bet that at least 80% of all people making reservations are APs. Well, a lot of people came once. Would you right, agree? With the thing, yeah. At least 80%? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it basically works out to this has basically been a month-long AP preview. Uh, I still don't necessarily agree with the way that they've done it as far as the merchandising and making sure that they're going to be have everything by the actual opening. We'll see. Uh, it's though, just right? a lot sloppy. It's a very sloppy way to do it rather than just coming out and saying that uh, it's an AP preview. You know, I mean, they could have just done that. It wouldn't have been that big of a deal. The they sp- could have just formatted out like three or four weeks for APs. And just had you sign up for uh, the same way you did for the uh, reservations, you know, and just have uh, each person, you, you know, no guests. Hmm. You know, speaking of AP previews, uh, a friend of mine was just telling me yesterday that uh, her friend in Imagineering was letting her know that when Rise of the Resistance opens, they're talking about doing an AP preview for uh, a soft open, essentially. You know, if you go and you have an AP then you can access that area of the, of the thing but according to her they're discussing doing only signature and up which I think is fine me too <laughs> I mean it's a benefit for those that pay a lot more for their pass it's also a benefit for those who get the right passes right because I still maintain that if you can't get a pass with a parking with parking that uh, no you point. shouldn't get a pass unless you don't use a car I mean you know, I had this discussion with somebody online. The only recently. people who should have not passes that come with parking are children, people that take the bus, and or people that live and will only go with people who have a car. I had this discussion with a woman last week in a group, and she was saying, "Oh, well, I have the Deluxe or SoCal or whatever pass, or I have. I think she might have changed to the Flex or something." And she said she basically visits once a week or once every two weeks. And I was like, Bullshit. and I said, how do you do that and afford to park? Like it's, you know, what are you parking in the neighborhoods and walking in or something? I mean, there are a couple neighborhoods that are within walking distance. You could technically park in that aren't. What'd she say? She said, no, <laughs> I have friends pick me up. I live a mile oh, away. Well, no shit. And then. I'm like, well, yeah, you're, you know, you're the oddball in the situation. See, that doesn't count. That counts as somebody who's getting a ride. That's not somebody who's actually driving to the park. So. All right, speaking of uh, uh, Walt Disney World pass holders, uh, Walt Disney World has a special where you can bring a friend. Oh, well, I guess that's to soften the blow. I guess so. So it says that uh, Gold, Platinum, Platinum Plus, and Premier pass holders can take advantage of Bring a Friend offer that grants you the option to purchase a one-day Park Hopper ticket for just $89 plus tax. Oh, so it's not a, it's not like Six Flags where you bring a friend free. No. Uh, these tickets are only available with theme park ticket windows, and the pass holder must be present with a valid Walt Disney World annual pass card and photo ID. Uh, the offer already started, and it goes through August 8th. But if not, if you're a Silver or a Select or a yeah, just, Epcot after four. Yeah, or... whatever I said, you can go and... Uh, uh, pass holders can buy up to six tickets over the course of the promotion. And uh, tickets must be used on the date of purchase. So, hey, there you go. Here's the Florida news for you. That's, again, it's a it's a blow softener. Oh, yeah, we also have this thing. Especially for the gold members. Golden up. Well, no, I mean the gold members who can't go to the AP previews. Oh, <laughs> well, we're not going to talk about that. Well, we're not going to talk about it at all because we don't care. <laughs> <clears throat> I just hope that when their when their uh, Galaxy's Edge opens, it'll uh, lessen all of the 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 you know people flying over here from East Coast just to go to ours. Oh. All right, so uh, Oogie Boogie Bash, um, some 
Fest is coming. He's bashing people? Uh, those tickets will probably be... Uh, wait, aren't tickets on sale, right? Yeah. Yeah. Get them before they're gone. That's all. No, uh, we got new details about the new World of Color show, Villainous, that uh, we've known about for quite some time, thanks to... Uh, thanks to uh, Gilbert Gottfried. Yeah, no. It wasn't Gilbert Gottfried. No? No, it was uh, uh, that other guy. Bob. Yeah, Bobcat Bob Goldwave. Bobcat Goldwave, yeah. Uh, the, uh, is going to be exclusive to the Oogie Boogie Bash uh, Halloween party over at DCA. Uh, we got details about it, as it will tell a twisted tale of a young girl, an all-new character named Shelly Marie. In Villainous, Shelly has a decision to make about her Halloween costume for this year and finds herself wondering if she could really be as strong and unique as some of her favorite Disney villains, including the Queen, Ursula, Dr. Facilier, yeah, it's coming. <laughs> this twisted tale carries Shelly on an unforgettable journey through fountains, lights, lasers, projections, and special effects. Villainous shows guests that deep down, there's a little villain in all of us. I agree with that. Especially Anthony. <laughs> and uh, we got a little logo for Villainous, which is really cool. I saw that. All right, well, we know that this year's uh, Pixar film coming out in... Uh, November is onward. Uh, we actually had a trailer for it, but we were too busy, I think, a couple weeks ago to play it. Uh, so we skipped that. But uh, it looks really cool. But we got a announcement today that uh, one year from today, which today is the 19th, so June 19th, 2020, we will get to the uh, next Pixar Animation Studio film, which will be called Soul. Ooh. Not a soul. But a soldier, no, that's not it. That's a song. That's <laughs> stupid. Uh, the it will take you on a journey from the streets of New York City to the cosmic realms to discover the ans- answer to life's most important questions. So, uh, it is being directed by Pete Doctor, who of course directed Inside Out, and uh, who we now know is the uh, head of. Uh, all Disney animation or whatever it was I said a few weeks ago when they reorganized all that stuff. So uh, not much else to tell you except for uh, the logo and stuff, which will be on the episode photo. That's all. All right, so we told you a while back about the upcoming Disney Channel show called Amphibia. Uh, we told you about it, and then they had some information about it at the Disney Channel thing at the fest at Disneyland. Uh, but we didn't have anybody there to tell us about what they showed, but they did have a little uh, clip but we have gotten more information about that as well uh it will be debuting monday june 17th wait so that already happened okay uh so apparently the show's already on it's on disney now and uh since you we've already missed the first episode is on the disney now app uh hopefully they have it on uh maybe if you have already missed it they might have it on uh demand uh, it is described as a frog out of water story. It follows a truly fearless teen who's transported to a strange and mysterious marshland inhabited by frog people, where she finds exciting new adventures and makes new friends. Uh series was created by uh, a uh, Cal Arts graduate, so that's always a good thing. Uh, he had a, he launched his career with an internship at Pixar. Uh, he also worked on Gravity Falls. Which cool. Was amazing. So. Yeah, so that's already on. Uh, and don't forget that has uh, Brenda Song from, uh, what was she from? Sweet Life? Or yeah, Zach and Cody. Zach and Cody, one of those shows, uh, plays the uh, lead in that. So check it out. It is already on, apparently. Hey, I bet you guys thought we were done talking about Endgame. Uh, it's not ended? No, wait. The, it's the start game? No, yeah. Endgame. Which apparently never ends. I don't know how it's an end game if it never ends. But uh Endgame is still on its quest to beat Avatar. Yeah. <laughs> for the highest grossing movie of all time. I thought that would have happened by now. I thought it was gonna happen by now too, but you know, things happen, uh things slow down, other movies come out. But uh Avatar or uh Disney is going to or uh, Marvel's gonna take a book out of uh out of uh you know uh James Cameron. Fox is uh, yes, Fox's playbook, and uh, they're basically uh, putting Endgame back into theaters, even though it, it was still playing. It's still playing over here, so it was never really out of theaters. Hmm. Uh, but they're putting it back into theaters, 
with uh, some new scenes and stuff. Tim wants to tell us all about it. Oh no, that's pretty much it. They're they're gonna put it they're gonna put it in and put new theater or uh, new scenes in. They didn't say how much. Uh, I guess once they do that, we can look at the running time. But uh, from, uh, from what they say, it's mainly stuff at the end. You had the date though, right? When was it supposed to start? I don't have by? anything. No, you you said it was supposed to start. I didn't. I heard this weekend. That's all I heard. Oh, okay. I, I mean, I could look up. I didn't actually see anything about it. Blah blah blah. Money, money, numbers, reboot, something, something. New footage. Uh, I don't know if it's been announced. I don't know how much. Yeah, we're doing it next weekend. That's pretty much what it says. God. It's not. There's a few more details from the interview with Feige. He says not an extended cut, but there will be a version going into theaters with a bit of a bit of a marketing push with a few new things at the end of the movie. Oh, maybe that's all it is. If you stay and watch the movie after the credits, there'll be a deleted scene, a little tribute, and a few surprises, which will be next weekend. But when was that? Feige says next weekend. That's likely not this weekend. After all, Disney would probably very much like the Tony Stark and his friends don't come stomping over the weekend uh, of Toy Story 4. But could it be the end of the month? Could it be July 4th holiday celebrations? Well, most likely it would be next weekend so it doesn't uh, stomp on Toy uh, Story. Uh, no, I was going to say uh, Far From Home because that comes out on the 1st, which is a Monday. Or actually it comes on the 2nd, which is a Tuesday. So uh, either it's going to be the weekend basically of Far From Home or it's going to be after Far From Home. There's no way it could be uh, anywhere anywhere else because, uh, like you said, if it's not this weekend, then, yeah. Uh, as of this morning, according to this article, it says that Avatar still is on top with $2.788 billion. Uh, Endgame is very close with $2.743. Hey, so you know where we're not going to find any information about the new footage in Endgame? Where? The mail. Oh, yeah. So we have our first emailer is... Wreck it, Rachel. Hey, and her subject line is "I'm boring." Well, sorry, <laughs> sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> hey guys, I haven't written in a while because I have nothing to say. Wow, I haven't been to Disneyland and I haven't seen any movies. But when there were no emails last week, I felt bad. I Rachel, I have an assignment for you: go uh, see Toy Story, write another email. There you go. So I'll say this. I have a better assignment. Go see anything else. Write an email. Actually, I have a better assignment. Go see Child's Play and write an assignment about Mark Hamill. No, go watch Toy Story. All right, so I'll say this. That rag sweater you were talking about is not something you can just buy at a store. I'm 99.9% sure I know where it came from. There's a girl who owns a shop and she makes nerd high fashion. I I recognize it. It's very expensive because it's high quality, especially designed. I'm not going to brock uh, her shop name because A, she's not selling them right now, and B, I'm not 100% positive it's her shop. Thanks for all the Galaxy's Edge chat. It's fun. It'll probably be months before I can get there. Tim. Why Join do, the club, sister. Tim, why do you hate Frozen? Did it just get too big for itself, or do you just generally dislike it? Hopefully I won't be so boring next week, Rachel. He's just a hateful person, Rachel. That's all it is. Uh, no, I just generally despise it. Uh, I don't... He just generally just despises don't like it. good things. I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say that some of the music's not okay, but too it's... Late. Uh, it's just, yeah, I, I don't like it. I just can't. And and the fact that it got so big, like you say, um, it made it worse. The fact that it was shoved down everyone's throat at Disneyland for like the longest time, that just instilled in me the truth. Yeah, but that's hatred. not Disney's fault. Blame the children. <laughs> it's true. Here's, here's how it's I true. describe Frozen. Have you ever, if you've ever been to I Mexico, mean, if, the, if the children would have been more enthusiastic about Tangled, Tangled might have been the bigger hit, even though it probably deserves to have been the bigger hit. Uh, I but described... the children obviously didn't uh, didn't uh, stick to it, and uh, you know weren't as enthused about it as they were uh, apparently about Frozen. What about Mexico? We're going to start talking again. Something about Mexico? Uh, 
Uh, I describe Frozen like this. If you've ever been to Mexico, you got runs. you go to some of those bars down there where the guys have the whistle and the wet rag and the bottle of tequila, and they they grab you by the hair, they pull your hair back, they pour the tequila down your throat, and then afterwards they shake your head and they wipe your mouth with a dirty wet rag, and that's pretty much Frozen. So Frozen is something that doesn't actually happen? Is that what you're saying? No, that happens in Mexico. Sure it does. Let me I find you a video. It, Diggs know. is shaking his head. It's well, a, very, says, it's a uh, very common thing in Mexican with the bars in Tijuana. Well, it sounds like you're going to the wrong place. I mean, I've only been there once, but they tried to get me, and I wasn't going to have it. I don't it. know. Like I said, it sounds like those people are going to the wrong place. First of all, anybody even I know that you don't go to a bar in TJ, you go all the way to Rosarito, straight to Rosarito. <laughs> At least that was like 15 years ago. It's probably you have to go all the way to Mazatlan now. <laughs> all right. Well, there's your answer there, Wreck It, Rachel. Something about Mex- hate. Mexicans and, and tequila. Yeah. Some, <laughs> basically, he's racist. <laughs> basically, his uh, his excuse for hating Frozen is racism. That's not racism. That's a thing that really happens. I'm What I'm saying is that they are... You All you wanted was a drink, but they're like going to pour it down your throat shake your head and wipe your face with a wet rag and you didn't want any of that stuff. It's basically yeah, because being forced on you be, everywhere you yeah, look. Yeah, because your child was sitting, pulling on your leg saying more, more, more. Yeah, not feeling it. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you for your email, Wreck-It Rachel. Uh, make sure you go see Toy Story 4. And our next email is from Dan the Mailman. And his subject line is Batu. The Gazuntite. Two. I hardly knew you. Uh, Dan... TFTI, where were you tonight? I mean, you should have been here. I'm just saying. Uh, Dan says, hey, guys, what's going on? Got to Batu again last Thursday. Actually went in with Diggs, and we messed with the Disney Play app almost the whole time. I'm sure he already gave you a rundown, but I'll give you some thoughts. The easy stuff to do, hack, which interacts with a lot of the doors, droids, etc. The whole objective is to learn to earn credits. Apparently not that you can spend, though. Hacking only gives you a small number of credits. You will make more by completing missions, which can be kind of lengthy, depending on what you're doing. Some uh, some will cause you to scan into boxes at different areas to see what's in them for the mission that you're on, but also lets you collect things to use later. Or he says for use later. The most coins can be made by piloting the Falcon for the ride where Hondo will pay you overall there's so much to do literally you can spend days working on all the stuff that they've laid out in the app i hope you have a charger you'll need it (laughs) yes it does drain your your phone rather quickly and you know you talk about how i don't remember anything guys this is what anthony was talking about like a year ago where apparently the result of the millennium falcon ride will affect your interactions as you go through um, so I don't know if they figured that part out, but what I they don't know. But what they did figure out is it probably affects your missions in this in the app. Oh, interesting. Maybe. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. Uh, just real quick. Um, uh, yeah. Make sure you do have a charger. Don't get those stupid rocket rods or whatever fuel rods, whatever they're called. It's a waste of money. <laughs> go to Amazon, get a good charger, and um, yeah, go and do these missions. So he says, I didn't go into Savi's to build a saber, but I do have a friend that when he found out I was going, he asked me to go get him the Asajj Ventress hilt and blades. Uh, Did him the favor, so I got to see how that worked in Doc Ondar's. Uh, Man, those blades are heavy. Uh, I think he means the hilts because the blades are light, but the hilt, especially the Ventress hilts, are like um, Anthony walked away, but they're really heavy. You could hurt somebody with one of those. Um uh, asked about having them set up or sent up front because there was no way I was carrying them all day and I was told to send them from the first order store. So you don't know about this. Ask at any shop. It's a very convenient way to not have to carry your packages around all day. But it's ready for pickup about three hours after you drop it off, so keep that in mind. I'm going to chime in here and say that they will cut that off at some point. So if you're like later in the day, they won't necessarily allow you to send stuff up. I think it's past like 6 p.m., that they don't send stuff up anymore, but definitely you have to have at least three or four hours before the park closes. Now, yesterday when I was there, I was walking up Main Street, and I saw um, one of the plaids walking. And I don't know if she was with the group of people or whatever, but she was carrying three of the lightsabers, the build. She had oh, three wow. of them. I was like, 
So they lady. built the sabers and they made her carry them around like, all day. That's messed up, dude. That, she had three of them on her back. I was like, oh, that's bad. That's messed up. They're not that heavy. I mean, they're not that well, heavy, still, but she still, was little, yeah. She's like a little lady and she's yeah. got to carry. <laughs> Where was this? On Main Street. Uh, I was going to say, she might have been holding them for a while the guest went on a ride. And then hadn't given them back to them yet uh, or that, something. They were working down Main Street. I was going to say, but Main Street, that, that's long past. It's like, oh, I just happened to forget to get my ballet saber back from her. That's messed up. Keep on carrying that shit, bitch. <laughs> so Dan goes on to say, uh, did our time on Batu, including three rides on the Falcon, which my son loves, and even spotted an Easter egg, a Star Tour st- star speeder leaving Batu as Chewie is guiding you in. I haven't seen that yet. No, uh, he sent me the picture. We posted up on Miles Pyre, all the social medias. And when I was on it yesterday, I actually seen the Star Speeder coming in with us. Oh. So that was pretty cool. Interesting. I'm going to have to look for that lesson. Which is definitely That's one the of opposite the... of what Dan's picture is. Yeah. yeah. That's one of the spots where I um, have been, after the first few rides, I've been closing my eyes because when Chewie takes over, it's like the thing kind of jerks a little bit. And I don't like the, makes me a little nauseous. So, But I'll look next time. Uh, lunch, a ride on Star Tours, and then over to DCA to watch Tale of a Lion King again. I'm sure Diggs talked all about this as well, though he seemed to like it, and uh, I did as well. I thought the first time I saw the performers did a little better, but it's something I'll definitely watch again. Uh, I need to go watch that myself. Yep. Watched the show, got a picture with the new statue of Forky, <laughs> then time to head home as I'd been at the resort three times that week. Yeah, it, where, it wears you out when you go a lot. Um, Statue is a strong word. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I'll, as I write this, I'll be seeing Toy, Toy Story 4 tomorrow, so non-spoiler review is coming. And on Friday during the day, I'll be heading to DCA for a little while. Maybe I'll catch Bo Peep out on town, out of town next week, so it'll be another email for me as we will see what happens. But after that, I'm sure, I'll, I'm sure we will all talk soon. Remember, you've got a friend in me. <laughs> Uh, that was super cheesy, but I'll see you all soon. Dan out. <laughs> I thought it was great. Hey, Dan. I liked it. That's good. I, I like that. It. Hey, you know, the I'm, cheesier, the better. I, it's actually nice because I uh, because I have no interest in seeing anything this weekend. It's uh, of a nice uh, weekend off from movies. For you're not like going to see Toy Story from like for like the first. Oh, time that's right. Like he's a heartless movie. bastard. What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> the digs laugh. Wait, wait. You just admit it. You are a heartless bastard. Can you say what does that have to do with anything? Well, what does it have to do with anything? Let's just say you admitted it. Well, I admit that I'm a heartless bastard. Okay, that's, that's all nothing, I'm saying. That's all I'm but saying. But that has nothing to do with Toy Story. Okay. I just have no interest in those movies. It's, it's you can't, you can't talk shit about Frozen and then turn around and say that and make fun of me for not liking Toy Story movies. So that's completely two different. Yeah, it's basically the same thing. So don't be a hypocrite, bitch. And with that, that's it, that's it for emails for today. Uh, I just want to thank you, Dan, for writing the email while you're stuck in traffic because he forgot earlier. Uh, thank you, to, to, thank you to Rick and Rachel for your email. Um, yeah, make sure you go uh, check out Toy Story Four. Let us know what you think of it. I will be seeing it sometime. I don't haven't made my plans yet. I really want to go El Capitan to to check it out, but I can't afford it right now. It's like fifty bucks for two, so. Yeah, exactly. Like why would you pay that much for when you can go to the I just want to go. I want to go for the experience because I've seen the first one and the second one there. It's kind of a thing. So but you didn't see the third one? I don't remember where I saw that one at. Well, then you, was, you've already screwed it up. So. Well, that's part of life. <laughs> anyway, if you guys uh, go check out Toy Story 4 or Child's Play, uh, let us know what you think. All you have to do is email us. Mousepire at gmail.com. Do you have a special occasion coming up? Looking to personalize your trip with a keepsake? Create customized buttons for birthdays, engagements, family vacations, even bridal parties, or just because. Check out buttonsbydigs.com today. Buttons by Digs, Buttons by Digs. Remember, those are buttons, not pins. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of the Mouse Power Podcast. Real quick shout out, uh, birthday shout out to my nephew Connor, who turned 16 years old on Monday. And uh, he's going to be bugging for a car pretty soon. But I don't have to buy it. No, not my problem. We had a lot of stuff to talk about today with Galaxy's Edge. A lot of... Uh, what? Where's that place? I don't know. Somewhere on Batu. Gesundheit. <laughs> hey, uh, make sure you got, when you guys get to go over there, when the reservations are done with and you guys can get into Batu, you go ahead and uh, use the app. 
and play the games and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. You got to do something since they won't have anything to sell anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All the merchandise is sold out. Don't even think about buying anything. Basically. I uh, can't wait till we can use it as a cut through for Mr. Toad's Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> that's just you. But, um, <laughs> yeah, try the app. It's awesome if you haven't tried it yet. And it's going to give a lot of things for your kids to do. And they're going to be, they can they can be there for hours just playing on the app. And You know, he jokes, but there will be a time where it will probably be easier to, if you're in Fantasyland, to cut through Galaxy's Edge. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, the other side. To but like, I'm not trying to, to get like to watch, the pool. <laughs> no, no. I mean, if you're trying to get to the other side to, like, watch uh, Phantasmic or something from yeah. the other side or... Or if you were trying to get to uh, Hungry Bear or, Splash or something or Splash Mountain yeah. or whatever, uh, and you don't want to have to go through the craziness. Or if Phantasmic's going on, it's a nice oh back way. Exactly. I wonder if you uh, have to uh, go on the app and uh, get a spot just to go to the back way. I don't know. I'm talking about later <laughs> when they get rid of the virtual queue. Uh, somebody was posting about something about when do you think that they'll get rid of, they'll stop virtual queue. Uh, I say January because I was gonna say, uh, yeah. by then uh, I know we don't really have an off season anymore, but uh, January is basically the office of the off seasons when it comes to Disneyland, uh, especially uh, once, you know, I mean, you you go right. Basically, you only have like a two week period. You go right from summer right into uh, Halloween. So, yeah. Uh, you don't really have a lot of space there. Uh, I think that they'll pretty much need the virtual queue all the way through. Uh, I don't think there'll be any reason for them to stop using it through Halloween because uh, then they'll know they'll, they'll need it again for Christmas when it gets really, really crowded. So uh, I predict January. All right. Don't forget to go over to DCA and check out Tale of the Lion King. Uh, I loved it. It's really cool. Uh, you guys should check that out. I will definitely be watching that again. And uh, you can also head over to Pixar Pier and take a picture with Forky. Yes, and uh, if you had a choice between standing in a 12-hour line for a ride or uh, waiting in line for Forky, I would rather be shot in the face. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But if you do, if you stand in line for 12 hours for a ride, you deserve to be shot in the face. There you go. So, yeah, as soon as, as we've been saying every week, we'll just continue to talk about Galaxy's Edge. Just tell, well, there's nothing to talk about, which probably not until next year or uh, maybe when Marvel Land opens, there'll be nothing to talk about. But. Maybe. And don't forget, uh, go get your uh, Star Wars Celebration tickets. Yes. Before they sell out. Yes. All right, so as usual, you can keep tra- up to track and up to date with everything that uh, is going on with the podcast and where these guys, what these guys are doing with the places and the social medias and the Galaxy's Edge and the droids and the... Oh, yeah, nobody's done anything with the droid. <laughs> the only thing you guys haven't done, none of you guys have had done a droid yet, but everybody's done lots of lightsabers and and uh, stuff and put lightsabers in places, and but nobody's done a droid yet. So, uh, But it, when they do, you'll find out about it on the social media. We're at Mousepire on Facebook, at Mousepire on the Twitter and the Instagram. And, of course, if that happens, you will definitely see a snappy of uh, him doing the droid. <laughs> oh, yeah. Make sure you guys are following the snappies because I do... I've been snapping a lot uh, while I'm in the parks. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Baloo1313. I would not be posting anything while being doing droids on there. Uh, also, follow but Damn it. <laughs> follow but my digs Rude. on Instagram. Uh, there you see your butt orders going out. Uh, don't forget to check out DGP Clothing uh, on Instagram. And also uh, go over there and get your mouse power gear. Get your custom-made uh, shirts. Um, anything you need, just check out that site but not your custom made droid no and um hey don't forget you can check us out on radio.com download the app and you can listen there support the podcast over at patreon.com slash mousepire and uh don't forget you can listen to us on the youtubes check out the podcast there with pictures and graphics and everything that tim the tech does for us I just want to know more note about the droids. I did hear that uh, there are issues with the snaps on the uh, the ball droids, the BB unit droids. So that video that uh, we had seen of the uh, of the cast member doing the cast member previews, his ball droid breaking apart. Uh, apparently, that wasn't just because he was stupid. Although he probably is also stupid. Uh, but uh, it's, apparently, there is an issue with the ball droids. So I uh, highly recommend that if you guys, until further knows. So they figured out their issue that if you guys uh, definitely lean your way towards 
uh, making a astromech if you're going to do the droids. So <laughs> until next time, remember, don't show up to the party with snacks when you didn't bring enough for everyone. So for <laughs> Oga, Savvy, and Doc Ondar, I'm Anthony. I'm Tim. I'm Diggs. Bye. Bye. The Force is with me, and I am with the Force. And I'm still here. Every word in that sentence was wrong. Are you still looking for droids? Bloop, bloop, blah, blah, blah. Bloop, 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 bloop. This podcast is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. Audio, sound bites, and other clips are property of their copyright holders. All original stuff is ours and property of mousepire.com. It's another week of Star Wars, Star Wars, and Anthony complaining about nothing, nothing. You don't like my song? What does that have to do with anything? (laughs) Don't be a hypocrite, bitch.